Welcome to today's video. This is example number four in the LLMware Fast Start series. Just to quickly remind you, we are working through a series of six examples in this Fast Start. You can find all of them in the LLMware GitHub repository. And to remind you of kind of where we've been, I mean, the first videos, we covered three main topics. We covered a library. How do you start organizing and converting a pile of files into an AI-ready knowledge base? In the second example, we really looked at how do you vectorize that knowledge base so that you can start running natural language queries against it. And then in the third video, we went through the basics of how do you locate a model? How do you load that model? How do you start running prompts against it? What we're gonna do in example four, five, and six, and they all have some similarities to them, we're gonna start bringing these components together. And fundamentally what that means is we're gonna be taking some form of knowledge some form of a retrieval, search, query, all the information that's in that library and in those embeddings. And we're gonna combine it with a prompt, an inference, and a model. So when you bring those two elements together, that's fundamentally what all RAG recipes are about, is bringing those two components together. And before we go and we look at the example, I do wanna leave just an image with everybody. So you start thinking about how do you build your own RAG systems and, and how do you build them for success? And that key principle is actually an ancient one. I mean, it's an ancient one that comes from Chinese philosophy. Most of you are probably familiar with this. In fact, many of you probably know the philosophy, the history, the mythology you know, behind this. But I think it's a very good metaphor to have in mind as you think about retrieval augmented generation. Retrieval generation, having them in harmony with each other, having them in balance, and recognizing that in some ways they're interdependent forces in any type of system that you're going to be building. A mistake that we often see beginners make is having a system that's out of balance. And what we mean by that is focusing everything on the prompt. How do I push more into the prompt? How do I just expand the context window? How do I just throw this over to the LLM and hope that the LLM is able to figure this out and give me a sensible answer? That's an out of balance RAG strategy. The most successful strategies that we see are strategies that think really carefully about assembling a thoughtful knowledge base, putting in place the right type of retrieval and querying strategy, and then combined with the right type of model, the right type of prompt, and the right types of questions. And when you bring those pieces together and you have harmony in it, that's what we see ultimately leading to success. So in short, don't forget about the retrieval part. The retrieval part is a fundamental part of actually delivering an effective RAG system. So with that metaphor perhaps in your mind, let's flip over and let's start looking at the code for example four. Example four actually is a fairly involved one because there's actually two components to it. We're gonna show two different scripts that are gonna achieve the same result, but it's to give you two different recipes, if you will, of how you can approach this basic problem. So what I'd like to do is we'll start out as always, just at the very bottom of the script, so you can see some of the configuration. We'll walk through each of the two examples, and then we'll run them. So first thing we do, as always in the Fast Start series, is we're gonna set the active database to SQLite. This doesn't require any separate installation. It runs locally. If at this point you've installed Mongo or if you've installed Postgres or you have access to one of those systems, all you have to do at this point is change that name from SQLite to Mongo or Postgres. We support those three databases out of the box. All you have to do is change that configuration. We're gonna look at a few models, and these are some of the models that we had looked at in example three. Again, we'll use a different combination of these in example four, five, and six. At any point, you know, as always, if you want to substitute it out and use GPT-4, just uncomment these two lines, insert your API keys here. In this case, uh, we're actually gonna run through, it's just a very simple model. It's a one billion parameter RAG fine-tuned model. It's the LLMware Bling model. You can go check it out on Hugging Face, see more of how it performs on various benchmarks, et cetera, et cetera. But that's the model that we're gonna use. And then we have these two separate scripts here. As I said, the first example, we're gonna do a contract analysis, and we're gonna do a contract analysis from a library. So what we're gonna do in that case is we're gonna go through a sequential series of steps. We're gonna take a set of contracts, we're gonna parse those contracts and put them in a library, much like we saw in example one. Once we've created that library knowledge base, we're gonna run several queries from it. We're gonna take the output from those queries. We're gonna pass it into a prompt. We're gonna ask our question then to the model and get the answer back based on that information that we've passed into the model. So that's the first example that we're gonna go through. The second example though, we're gonna showcase another capability that we have in LLMware with our prompts. 
And it's an idea called prompts with sources. And what we're going to do in that case is we're actually going to skip the step of building a library. We're going to go through file by file, and we're actually going to parse that document in memory. We're going to run an in-memory query against it. We're going to package all of that as a source in the prompt directly, and then we're going to pass that to the model. Now, depending on the use case, let's say you have a thousand contracts. If you have a thousand contracts, there's no doubt about it. Build a library. It's going to be the most powerful and reusable and scalable way to do things. But let's say it's a quick example. Maybe you've just got a couple of documents. Then doing this directly from a prompt oftentimes is a much faster and much more efficient way to do it. So we're going to show you both of these different recipes and we're going to accomplish the exact same thing, but we're just going to show two different ways to do it. So let's scroll up. We're going to run example 4a first. This is at the top of the script. Just to remind you, again, this is some of the ground that we covered in example number one. All we're going to do, we're going to load some sample agreement contracts. We're going to parse them and we're going to put them in a library. So all that we've covered in previous examples. So now the new stuff. What we're going to do first is there are three questions that we want to be able to ask to every single one of our employment agreements. First question is, what are the names of the two parties? The second is, what is the executive's base salary? And the third is, what is the governing law? Now we've picked these three examples for a reason. Is they're actually fairly representative of the types of fact-based questioning that you might do any type of document, whether it's a legal document or a technical document or anything else that you may use in the course of your business. You know, the names of parties are always important things that you're looking to extract from any kind of a document. The base salary we use a lot, it's a great example of a concrete numerical value, which oftentimes is something that you're looking for in a complex business document. I'm looking for a specific number. And then the governing law is really around a key or a string value that you might be looking for that, again, might be a very common variable. You may have multiple templates and you're looking for, well, which one was this? What was the applicable thing here? So by these three pretty simple examples, we're trying to illustrate a few different common patterns you know, of extraction that are fairly common in different documents. Now, you may wonder what this topic is. Well, as I mentioned, as so we're looking at the yin and yang balance, a good retrieval strategy can solve a lot of problems when you start thinking about prompting and inferencing. So what we're doing here is we know, we know a little bit about these documents. Uh, we don't want to go look through all of them again, but we know a little bit about them. And what we know in these agreements is, in fact, there are a lot of parties in the green agreement. It's not just two parties. It might be dozens of parties that are mentioned, different companies, different individuals throughout this complex employment agreement. But what we do know, what we really want is we want to know who are the parties that are mentioned whenever the phrase executive employment agreement is used? Because we want the parties to that agreement, not any of the parties that happen to be mentioned in any of the passages throughout the document. So by providing a topic, by providing a little bit of expertise and focus to say that's what we want to look at, it actually helps us to narrow and target so that we get a much better retrieval so that we're going to get a much more effective and consistent answer from the LLM. Second thing, similarly with base salary, we know if, if a text passage doesn't have the phrase base salary or something pretty close to it, it's not going to have the information that we're looking for and likewise with governing law. So we use that topic in this case as a very simple text-based filter to help us to narrow that list so we can focus on just those passages of interest so we can get a more reliable and effective answer from the LLM. So first thing that we're going to do, as we had covered in some of the previous examples, we're going to create a query object. The query object, we're going to load in our contracts library. And then here we're going to run a couple of different queries that we haven't shown before, but they're fairly intuitive. The first is against that query object that has our contract library. We're going to get a list of all the document IDs. And then we're going to get a list of all the document file names. We're going to print those on the screen so you can see them. But we're going to use that just to say, tell us all the individual documents that are in this library. In this case, it's only about 15 documents. It's very straightforward. But in a case where perhaps you have hundreds of documents, it can be very, very useful to very quickly identify them by document ID as well as by the document file name. Sometimes document ID is a much more reliable way to consistently identify information than the file name. Then uh, what we're going to do, we are going to instantiate a prompt object, and then we're going to iterate through that list of all the document IDs, each of them representing a contract. We're going to go through our question list. You can see we've just pulled out those two dictionary keys. Then this is where a lot of the work is going to happen, is this key line. We're going to run another query. This time we're going to run a text query 
with that document filter. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna look at that specific document ID and we're gonna run that query topic, executive employment agreement, as an example. What this is going to do then is it's gonna give us in query results a list of dictionaries, a list in this case of five dictionaries. Each one represents one of the relevant passages from the employment agreement with the document that we had specified that had information um, of executive employment agreement. That's the text. In effect, that's the text we're highlighting or putting a little sticky note next to or, or cutting and pasting. That's what we want to use to assemble to go create our prompt. Now, how do we merge that into the prompt? Well, we do that with this really powerful method called add source query results. What that's going to do is it's gonna add into our prompter object. It's gonna go add those five query results and it's gonna package and batch them so that it fits in the context window of our model. Then when we prompt the model, we're gonna prompt with source. So that source has already been loaded and attached into the prompt. So it's gonna get passed automatically as part of the inference. We're gonna ask our question. We're gonna use just a standard prompt. So it's not doing any fancy things here. It's essentially concatenating that source passage with our question. We're then gonna print out the results and then we're gonna loop through this for every single document ID. So hopefully that's clear. I wanted to take a couple of minutes to go through this because there are some really important concepts in this. So with that, let's go ahead and let's run this example. And here we go. We've parsed the documents. We've seen that before. As I mentioned, we wanted to run that query to get the document ID list, also to get the file name list. And now we're often, we're analyzing each of these individual contracts. You can see for the first contract, we asked each of our questions, the model answer is printed right next to it. We're moving through contract after contract. You can see the inference speed is pretty good as well as the accuracy. And we're able to achieve this with a really small model. And a lot of it, I think, comes back to that yin and yang picture. We had a really good retrieval strategy. That's why I wanted to spend a few minutes on it so you could really see what we were doing, organizing our knowledge, making sure that we had a good, thoughtful topic, that we were packaging up relevant passages. We leverage a lot of the machinery then of LLMware that does a lot of work helping us make sure that the context is packaged the right way. And then we're using a small model, this Bling model, but a model that's really been fine-tuned for this type of question answering work. And as a result, you can see we're getting really good, high quality results out of this. We're getting information about the two parties, we're extracting a numerical key, and we're extracting a good string key as well. So this is gonna be done in just a second. When this is done, we're actually gonna go, I'm gonna look at example 4B. So while that's going on, let's start to look at example 4B. Now again, uh, you'll notice a lot of similarities with example 4A. In this case, we point at that contracts path, but notably don't create a library from it. The question list is exactly the same. We create a prompt object and we load a model, the exact same thing we did last time. But now instead of looping through document IDs from our library, we're just gonna loop through that file path, the file path of where all our contracts are. So we're looping through contracts, not through blocks that are sitting in a text index. And then what we're gonna do again, just like what we saw last time, for each question, we're gonna pull out our topic, we're gonna pull out our query. But now this time we're gonna use a very different method. And I wanted to do this to showcase a really powerful capability within the prompt class, which is to add a source document. And this is just what it sounds like. So we're taking directly from that file path, which is our contracts path, which is where we have our sample contracts, the name of that file, which is a PDF file, and in this case, a supplemental query. What this one line of code is gonna do for us, it's gonna go, it's gonna pull that file, it's gonna parse that file in memory, text chunk it, break it up into a bunch of results for us. It's then gonna run a filtering query, which in this case is our query topic, executive employment agreement, base salary, governing law. It's gonna then narrow that to provide us a source packaged in the prompt, only those results that match with that filter query. And then just like we did last time, we're gonna run our prompt with source. Now, hopefully you can see the difference here. We didn't create a library. We didn't add query results. What we did is we used this one line to do a ton of that work and to build it directly into our prompt. So now let's go ahead and let's run this example. Let's make sure we comment out the first one. We don't want to see that again. Okay, so now we're going to run this one, example 4B. And as we run it, you're going to see the exact same results. So don't expect anything especially different. We're accomplishing the same goal through a slightly different means. 
And this can be, as I mentioned up front, a really powerful tool when maybe you have just a few documents and you want to be able to run through and very quickly integrate those documents, the pure files, into a prompt. You can do that in line in the prompt with sources without necessarily having to go and to create a library. So we hope that you've enjoyed you know, this example. We walked through some concepts in a lot of depth of bringing together a, the right retrieval strategy with generation. But one thing that's really notable, and I want to highlight it before we close this video, all of this was based on a text index in this example four. What we're going to look at in example five is the most common pattern in RAG where you're using a semantic query, a natural language query, in conjunction with a semantic vector database. So that's what we're going to look at. That's the new dimension that we're going to add as we flip over into example five. So thanks. We hope everybody has enjoyed this video. Video. Any questions, as always, come check us out on Discord. We'd be happy to help you and we'd be happy to welcome you as part of the LLMR community. Thank you, everybody. Take care and have a wonderful day.